Today, Greg and I are going to talk about Finn. Um, wrong Finn, Ryan. Finn Whitrock, of course, one of the most underrated actors on American Horror Story. Over four seasons, Finn has made his mark as one of the best. He even earned an Emmy nomination for his role back in season four. Speaking of Freak Show, let's start there with Finn's unforgettable performance as Dandy Mott. If you ask me, this is easily Finn Whitrock's most iconic AHS performance. Chances are you probably agree. In Finn's AHS debut, he portrayed this sick and twisted Dandy Mott, a descendant of Edward Philippe Mott, who we will meet in season six's Roanoke. The entire Mott family, including Dandy's mother Gloria, have been known to be a bit mad. The Mott family has unimaginable wealth and power, and Dandy is Gloria's only child. The result? Dandy is a spoiled little brat, well, a spoiled man-child who we soon learn is completely demented. He's Tate meets Michael Langdon mixed in with a little Patrick Bateman. And I practice acting faces in front of the mirror, sad, happy, moody. We meet the Mott family when they attend Frawl and Elsa's Cabinet of Curiosities. But Dandy isn't interested in Elsa in the slightest. Instead, he wants to own, yep, you heard that correctly, he wants to own Bet and Doc Tatler. See, Dandy enjoys playing with his endless supply of toys and dolls and treats the freak show like his own toy chest. And if he doesn't get what he wants, he throws a tantrum. They fail in purchasing the twins at this point, but they wouldn't give up that easily. Now, Gloria really hopes that her son would just find a nice girl and get married, but there's no chance in hell that's happening. Dandy doesn't want a normal life. He wants to be a showman, an actor, join the freak show, and become a star. In order to cheer her son up, Gloria decides to pick up Twisty the Clown. Maybe you can cheer him up. Aggressive move, Gloria. Aggressive move. Back at their mansion, Twisty surprisingly doesn't kill Dandy. He just knocks him out. But Dandy tracks him down and finds out that the killer clown is the one kidnapping and murdering innocent people around town. Dandy immediately wants to join in on the fun. You'll have to do a much better job of confinement if we're going to have any fun. Eventually, Twisty would join Edward Mordrake's gang of ghosts in the afterlife, leaving Dandy to take over in his stead. It wasn't long before Dandy would notch his first kill. Actually, he most likely killed his childhood friend, as well as some neighborhood pets, but Dora, the housemaid, was his first kill that we see in season four. <laughs> Poor Patty LaBelle. Gloria and Dandy would cover up the murder and bury her body in the backyard garden. I wonder what else, or who else, is buried on their property. Back to the Tatler twins. I told you Dandy wouldn't give up on his dream that easily. Elsa eventually sells off the twins to Dandy, but tells everyone around her that the twins ran away. Let's be honest, Elsa really sucks. Dandy tries his best to sell the twins on a life of luxury. Bet is interested, but as usual, Dot is a lot more cautious. Thankfully, Jimmy Darling figures out who Dandy really is and he convinces the Tatler twins to get as far away from him as possible. It wouldn't be long until Dora's daughter Regina would come looking for her. No surprise here, but Dandy's solution is to kill her as well and hide the evidence. But Gloria just can't go through with it and wants her son to get some professional help. Dandy feels betrayed at even the idea of this and ultimately decides to kill his own mother. Dandy's next mission, get revenge on Jimmy Darling. He murders a house full of Tupperware ladies and frames Jimmy for it. How does he pull it off? Well, he paid off the cops, of course. He also has them get rid of his Regina problem as well. You got a shovel? <laughs> By the end of the season, Elsa would ditch her family of freaks for Hollywood. She sells off the freak show to Dandy, and they don't like their new boss. Dandy thinks he's the star of the show, but they want nothing to do with him, so they all quit. That was enough to push Dandy over the edge. <sighs> Showtime. He goes on a killing spree at the campground and nearly murders everyone there. The Tatler twins now know exactly what they're dealing with here. They poison Dandy during dinner and he wakes up inside Houdini's water tank. The freaks would finally get their revenge as Jimmy, Desiree, and the twins watch on in enjoyment as Dandy meets his doom. That boy is a star. And finally, the Mott family line ceases to exist with Dandy's death in 1953. Good riddance. Whit Rock will return the very next year in Hotel doing double duty. First, we'll start with his role as the male model Tristan Duffy. Whatever. He first appeared at the Hotel Cortez because of a fashion show held by Will Drake. 
For a little backstory, Tristan was the victim of bullying and disapproval growing up. This trauma would lead him to his downward spiral of drug addiction and petty theft, which at one point he even spent time in jail. When Duffy first shows up at the Hotel Cortez for Will Drake's fashion show, he gets the attention of the Countess with his reckless behavior. Later that night, he would stumble into her room looking for drugs before he's caught by Donovan and nearly turned into his next meal before Elizabeth intervenes. Moments later, Tristan's night would get even weirder when he witnesses a murder in front of him, and when he tries to flee, the Countess catches him and turns him with her blood. Now it wouldn't take Tristan long for him to embrace his new vampiric lifestyle as he would seduce a man on Grinder and bring him upstairs to a very pleased Countess for lunch. Tristan would spend some time with James March and nearly kill Will Drake before Elizabeth puts a stop to it because she needs Drake alive in order to get his money. Later on, Tristan would meet Liz Taylor and the two would fall in love almost immediately. Tristan felt that Liz could see him for who he truly was and not just a male model. Unfortunately, this love story would require some cooperation from the Countess in order for it to work, and she was not happy when Liz revealed the affair to her. <laughs> Later, when Iris hires the medium Billy Dean Howard to reach out to Tristan, Tristan refuses to communicate with Liz but soon reveals himself as a ghost to her only after Liz died. It turns out Tristan wanted Liz to continue her life, but now they can finally be together forever. Those things will kill you. Earlier in the season, Elizabeth said that Tristan reminded her of someone from her past. It turned out to be her former lover, Rudolph Valentino, also portrayed by, yep, Finn Whitrock. Based on the real Rudolph Valentino, he was a famous Italian actor in the US who starred in several classic silent films including The Sheik and The Son of the Sheik. On the show, Valentino was married to actress Natasha Rambova, and they would start a relationship with the then-human Elizabeth, who was a young actress he had met on the set of The Son of the Sheik. Later on, Rudolph was approached by famous director Friedrich Wilhelm Murnau during a tour of his next film. Turns out, the director is actually a vampire in the AHS universe, and he would turn Valentino, gifting him eternal life as long as he could manage his daily nutrition of human blood. A few months later, he faked his own death by killing his stunt double and making people believe it was really him. Soon after, Elizabeth would discover the truth and he would turn her into a vampire along with Natasha. Unfortunately for Valentino and Natasha, they had failed to calculate James March into their plans with Elizabeth. You see, she was still married to March, and when he found out about the throuple, he would trap Valentino and Natasha in a closed hallway in the Cortez, leading Elizabeth to believe that Rudolph had abandoned her. Many years later, Valentino and Natasha would finally break free from the hotel walls and would regain their strength and beauty after draining the blood from guests at the Cortez. Soon, the Countess would have a private investigator track them down to a motel where the two would try to rekindle their love. One problem, Donovan's a pretty jealous dude, and he would soon confront Rudolph at the motel, ending with the silent film legend shot in the head. You're not so pretty now, are you? For the following season of Roanoke, Finn played Jether Polk, easily the most unrecognizable character he's played on the show. Now, Jether is kind of the forgotten child amongst the inbred family who are also cannibals. Jether and his brothers capture Monet, Audrey, and Lee when they're trying to escape from the Rono colony, but instead of joining in on the torture and violence, Jether is more into filmmaking. He picked up his video camera and started documenting all of it with the intention of using the footage to masturbate to. Jether has problems. Unlike the rest of his family, Jether actually never killed a person. Lee uses the opportunity alone with him to try and turn him against his family so that she can escape. The coked up Jether is really into the attention that Lee is giving him, and she ultimately seduces him. Jether falls for it, and lo and behold, Lee is able to break free after killing him. Poor Jether never stood a chance. Most recently, Finn would pop back up for the season finale of AHS 1984. Here he played Bobby Richter II. That's right, Mr. Jingles had a son after he turned his life around in Alaska. It's present day 2019 and grown up Bobby has a lot of questions that he needs answered. Like what happened to his dad, who's sending him monthly checks, and so on. So he calls up an Uber and shows up at Camp Redwood. He probably should have brought a friend. Here he meets Montana and Trevor, who unbeknownst to him are ghosts. But then they prove it. The pair kill themselves right in front of him, only to pop back up seconds later. Yeah! 
This is when Bobby should get the hell out, but he sticks around and Montana explains the backstory of his father, Margaret Booth, and Richard Ramirez. Bottom line, Bobby needs to leave Camp Redwood immediately because the Night Stalker really wants to get his revenge on the entire Richter family. As Bobby goes to leave, Richard sure enough attacks him, but he's able to escape. Run and never come back! Come on! Bobby then checks out Red Meadows Asylum, where his dad was institutionalized back in the day. The guards nearly do the same to him, but luckily it just so happens that Donna now runs the place. It's about Benjamin Richter! Wait. What about Richter? Donna helps answer some of Bobby's questions, but they get some more help from Brooke who turns out survived after all. Brooke explains that she had been sending Bobby money each month while in hiding. After clearing all that up, Bobby heads back to Camp Redwood because apparently he felt some connection to the land or that someone was watching over him. Yeah, dude, it's filled with ghosts. Back at Camp Redwood, he of course runs into Margaret who tries to kill him. Thankfully, the ghost of Daddy Richter stops her. Finally, Bobby and his father meet face to face, but the beautiful moment is interrupted by Margaret. Damn it, Margaret. That's when Lavinia Richter, aka the Lady in White, jumps in and takes care of Margaret. Bobby finally gets his happy ending as he says goodbye to his dad, uncle, and grandmother. So which Finn Whitrock performance is your favorite? The correct answer is Dandy Mott. Kidding, let me know yours in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.